All right, let's get into it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the SQL Server Configuration Manager. To do that, go down to your Windows Start button, scroll down and find Microsoft SQL Server. I'm using 2008R2. Click on SQL Server Configuration Manager. If you don't see that, you can go to the, the search under the Windows button. Sometimes there's a search right here. Uh, Windows 10 is just right there at the bottom. Uh, for the most part, you can just type in SQL Server Manager, all one word, 10, if you're using 2008R2, and then .msc. That is going to bring up the SQL Server Configuration Manager. Okay, there it is. What we're going to do is, first, let's click on Server Network Configuration. Choose Protocols for Cache Footprint. It may say SQL Express if you didn't follow the instructions when you installed SQL Server Express. Uh, but if you went through the How to Install Cache Footprint video, this is what you should see. So select Protocols for Cache Footprint. Choose TCP IP. Make sure Enabled is set to Yes. Click OK. And while I'm going through this, you may not be able to get into this tool. And if that's the case, I'm going to cover how to do that in the next Step in this video. So I'll show you how to get in there and, and change the registry settings so you can enable TCP IP. This is what's going to allow you to connect multiple terminals to this single server instance. Now that that's enabled, you need to go through and mine doesn't show it, but you should be able to right click on SQL server uh, and then in parentheses cache footprint, right click on that and do a restart of that service. Since I don't have it, I'm just going to search for services, run that, Scroll down and find SQL Server. And you can get to this uh, either by searching for services like I did, uh, or you can go through the Windows Control Panel. It's under System. Uh, let me see, System. I'll bring it up here. Show you control. Uh, Windows 7, you can click on the, the Start menu, and like right here on the side, it's going to show Control Panel. Then you're going to go to Administrative Tools. If you have the small icon view, if you're doing category view, click on system and security. Then scroll down and find administrative tools, and you'll see in here services. Okay, so that's how you would get to that screen through control panel. Right click on the SQL server service and restart it. What this is going to do is since TCP IP is now enabled, it's going to generate a port number that we can use for forwarding through the firewall to allow other pieces or other clients to connect to this main port. All right, so that's how you enable TCP IP through the SQL Server Configuration Manager. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to turn it off here. I'm going to show you what that looks like when you go through the register. Okay, so I'm going to restart the service. Start. I am working from home just like everybody else, so hope you hope you love my, my background. <laughs> there might be some noise at times, but it is what it is. Okay, so now I have that turned off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the registry editor, and you can just search for reg edit or registry editor. Uh, otherwise, I believe, uh, actually, I don't know. That's how I usually get to it. So, uh, registry editor, probably in uh, the Windows Start menu somewhere or Control Panel. Uh, and then you are going to go to, let me go back up to the top of that to make sure you all collapse. All right, so you go down to local machine. HP Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, here it is. Uh, and then under that folder, you're looking for SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server, there it is. And you'll see the installed instances right here. I have the cache footprint installed. I'm going to expand this. And you're going to go to the instance names. So go ahead and expand on that. Choose SQL. The reason we're doing this is because there's the cache footprint instance we have installed. And here is the folder that it points to for the TCP/IP uh, setting. So we need to go to this folder. So scroll down and find that. Here it is on the left. Expand it. Go down to MS SQL Server. Expand SuperSocket Net Lib. And choose the TCP/IP folder. Here you'll see an enabled property. Go ahead and double click that. Change it to the value to one. It's zero because we disabled it. So I'll change that to one, and then go and restart the service. I'm going to go to services, SQL, 
right click restart. What this is going to do is generate the port numbers. So now that that's done and restarted, I'm going to expand the TCP folder, scroll all the way down and go to IP all. Okay. Here's my TCP port. You may see it looking something like this under the dynamic port, which is totally fine. That works too. Um, so go ahead, double click that, copy this port number to your clipboard, and then close the registry editor. That's all there is to enabling it, grabbing the port in the back end through the registry. So now that we have that enabled, let's go ahead and add this port to the firewall so our client can connect. First thing we want to do is bring up the firewall. I'm using Windows Defender, so I don't have an antivirus installed. If you do have like McAfee, Norton, Avast, AVG, something like that, you're going to want to add an, a port exception through those tools, um, and that will allow clients to connect the server as well. So since I'm using Microsoft Windows Defender, I'm just going to do it through here. So I'm going to click Inbound Rules, click New Rule, and then select Port. I'm going to paste in my port number, make sure it's TCP IP here, click Next. I'm going to allow all the connections for all the different domains. And I like to use SQL Server so I know what it's talking about. This is just the name of the rule. And I'm going to put the, the abbreviation TCP at the end. I want to highlight all and copy it because I'm going to use it in the next one. And then you have to create another rule, another port rule. It's a UDP rule this time, 1434, which is the browser service that basically broadcasts events on the network so all the other, other clients can see it. I'm going to click Next, up Next, and I'm going to paste that, go to UDP, so I know what that is. Hi, this is Samuel, my son. Hello. Hi. Oh, okay, thank you. I have to go go. So, uh, there is that. I'm going to click Finish. So I created those two rules. Now that I have those rules set up, the ports are shared, everything's ready to go, you'll be able to connect the client to the main computer. Um, and also, one other thing, if you wanted to access cash footprint at the store from home, like a laptop, something like that, uh, you'll just grab another instance of cash footprint, install it at home, and point it to your external IP address for the business. And you can get that by going to, let's see, go to the search for my IP address, and that will bring up your IP4 address, and you go to what's my IP address, it should show you, it's generating, there it is. So there's my IP address. You just copy that and you point cash footprint to that. Okay, and then you do the comma port number. One last thing is you'll have to forward that port through your router to this machine that has your database on it. Then you'll be able to connect from outside to, into the store. So if you have any questions on that, let me know, and uh, we'll go from there. Appreciate your time. Thank you.